A month after her whirlwind wedding, Martha's husband suggested that she take up tennis. In the back of her mind, Martha knew why her husband had married her. You can't hear? What one? Huh? Okay, let's try this. Is that better? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Um, a month after her, wor her whirlwind wedding, Martha's husband suggested she take up tennis. In the back of her mind, Martha knew why her husband had married her. She had the perfect look for the furniture in his new home. Even his decorator seemed to think so, the way he would murmur perfect every time she sat down on one of the striped silk water, striped water silk chairs that they had chosen. After a while, she felt as if she were being examined by, for flaws by every light in the house, and she began paying excessive attention to the way she dressed. As the chairs were replaced with more valuable period pieces, she began to feel a growing competition with the furniture, and her efforts at grooming took on a ferocity of a reupholstering job. She had her tits done twice, her nose reshaped, silicone injection into her lips, and so that somewhere along the way, she completely misplaced her own face. <laughs> she, knew the look, she knew the look they wanted. It was a sort of wasp old money look, a look that you had to be born into. But her husband, a kid from the valley, was convinced that he could buy it. And she was a girl from an ugly situation in Ohio who thought that it was her childhood dream. As a dream, it was cute for a five-year-old, average for a 25-year-old, and rather desperate at 35. Now, oh, gee, there, now at three in the morning, she would find herself rattling around her dream home quite alone, and there didn't seem to be much fulfilling going on here. Oh, there was plenty of quaaludes, television, placidils, and several self-help books having to do mostly with crystals and out-of-body experiences. But frankly, the only real contact she had was with the Persian rug downstairs, where she was in the habit of passing out on, the, on her way to the built-in bar. Martha's mother and her mother, Martha's mother and her mother before her were cannibals. They both lay in wait in the sunny swamps of Tampa, Florida, big brown alligators with hooded yellow eyes. Is that for me? Oh, damn. Sorry. Occasion oh, with a big brown alligators with hooded yellow eyes, occasionally fighting amongst themselves just to keep in shape. Every day they called Martha and reminded her that when she failed, she could always come home. That they were waiting. She could picture her. She could picture their long teeth and short arms tearing her flesh into bits with the intense muscular pleasure of born predators. The last time she visited her mother, she woke up at night to find her poised over the side of her bed, staring at her hand just, that lay just above the covers. In horror, she watched her mother's jaw unhinged, displaying an endless row of sharply pointed teeth, like the rows of newly planted corn peeking through the black dirt of the Ohio fields, which stretched off the road and into the distant hills of her childhood. Next morning, Martha was on the plane back to L.A., determined to make her marriage work. At Martha's request, her husband replaced her tennis lessons with therapy sessions. She had complained that Alan, her tennis instructor, had made...